Here's a nice looking colony. You know, again, 1.3, one male to three females. What's going on guys? Welcome to the new rodent facility. This is where I breed all of my ASFs and I'm really proud to show it off. Let's take a tour. I'm gonna to turn these fans off so I don't have to yell at you and then I'll tell you all about my setups in here and how I take care of these ASFs to feed my ball pythons next door. What's up? Welcome to the proper rodents uh, facility. Of course, I decided to wear my worst color uh, black t-shirt to come do to film in the rodent room. If you don't raise rodents, they have dust everywhere and it's a constant challenge. It's actually why I wear my hat in the facility so it doesn't all get in my hair. And you can see a fan behind me. There's another one ahead of me and there's an exhaust up here that I'll show you as well uh, on the tour. But I'll tell you all the things that I thought about going into this rodent room, what's worked. Uh, I'll tell you a couple things that haven't worked or that I would do different if I had it to do over again. And I have a variety of different setups that uh, something probably would work for you. I'll start by just walking you through. First and foremost, I love these flaps. They keep the dust out of the rodent room. Excuse me, they keep the dust out of the reptile side, which is right there. The other thing it does is help with temperature. This whole facility is heated with floor heat, radiant floor heat, but the rodents obviously put off a lot more of their own body heat than the snakes do. And this room tends to be about five degrees warmer than the rest of the facility. And obviously I wanna keep the snakes uh, at a comfy temperature and humidity. It's actually a little bit high right there. So these flaps, those are walk-in cooler flaps and they're doing exactly what they're designed to do in a restaurant, which is moderate temperature loss and add to stability there. And then it's adding a physical barrier for the dust. Food feed, uh, bedding supplies, I store those out here. When I open them, they go into airtight uh, lid containers labeled and where they're all stored is labeled on here as well. Of all the setups I'm gonna talk about today, this is my favorite setup. This is an ARS uh, rodent rack. They rate it for mice. Usually on rodent racks, they're rated for either rats or mice. Generally the ASF setups do better in the mice setups, but they can do uh, just fine in both in rat breeding uh, containers too. And I'll show you one of those setups as well. But these are, uh, I think that the, I think the whole rack is called like a 1050 perhaps. These are 10 series tubs and it comes in uh, a stack of 50 or you can order it individually. I like these, I set them up in 1.3 colonies and they do very, very well in these. High productivity, uh, easy to feed, really easy to clean. One of the hacks that I absolutely recommend for anybody at scale is to have an extra set of tubs. You can flip everything all at once and then I take it next door to the reptile side where the sink is and I just clean them all at once. So it's really nice and having the stainless steel table workspace, that's what that is for as well. That is for cleaning, sorting, production. I will not put racks where these work tables are. I'm not gonna sacrifice that workspace. So I like this. These, everywhere that you see the uh, black piping today is completely automated water. Um, I really like it. A lot of people freak out with the automated water about floods, but here's the thing, even if this, let's say that this bin right here, this one floods, it's still only gonna flood straight down. And yes, in the worst case scenario, you would flood about uh, 10 tubs and that's not ideal. But you're not gonna flood all 50. It's not all gonna fail at the same time uncontrollably. That's what you have to remember on that. So yes, floods can happen, but I guarantee a five gallon bucket would cause a whole lot of damage as well if that were to fail there and the bucket were full. Here's a nice looking colony. You know, again, 1.3, one male to three females. They stay in there. There's happy babies, the production look, and there's lots of production in the back, back there as well that you can see. This setup here has been a really cool adventure. I had to kind of piece this together because the ARS setups are expensive. I don't have the money to just go drop a couple grand at a time. If I had unlimited funds and a way to fund everything, sure, I probably would pick those or look at some offerings from Vision or Freedom Breeder. Um, I like those styles. But these lab bins have provided a real opportunity for me to sort of substitute and uh, really actually push and grow and expand 
in the meantime. So one day I'll probably sell this section, this setup, and get another one of these or another offering, like say from Freedom Breeder or Vision. But let me show you these lab bin setups. I really love them. So you can see here, I have the water lines plumbed into the lab bins. Now it takes a little modification. I use clips from Vision and you can see that I bent the lab bin cover there. But these do really well. I hear a lot of people say that uh, the babies escape from these. I wean babies every Monday and I don't have an issue with escapees. There'll be one every now and again, but I really like these setups. Um, I use the stainless steel water nipples there. Let's see, focus, there it is. Um, and these produce really well also. These are set up in 1.6s or 2.6s and they produce really well. I got these lab bins, actually, I directly imported them from the Chinese factory. And it just so happens that the factory also makes this rack that fits the bins perfectly. You'll see in a minute, the American measurements, uh, inches versus millimeters, doesn't always line up just right. And I've had to get creative on some other setups. The other thing I'll show you are these large bins. Now these are for uh, rat breeding, but because the food hopper dips down, you see how low it dips down there? See if I can, yeah. The babies can get to the food. It's really not that big of a deal. I set those up in 2.10s and I'm really not happy with it. They do better in the smaller bins in my experience, or maybe I need a different combination in there. I'm not sure. They're not my favorite uh, for grow outs. They're fantastic up here. These are the ones that are ready for my ball pythons. So I do like, I do like them for that. I've not been a big fan of them as the breeding containers. This side here is a uh, variation on the very same setup. These are the big rat bins up top. Again, not my favorites, they do okay, but they don't do great. These, the 1.6s do, or 2.6s do very, very well. I, I'm still very happy with these. I like these setups. If I had this portion to do over again, I'd set them all up with these bins here. And you can see, you know, they're doing pretty well. Those will be weaned in a day or two. Those are about the size that I take out before they escape. But again, you don't see any escapees or any on top that have gotten out. Okay, this setup here, this is a one-off machine shop. Actually, it wasn't one-off. I think they made 10 or 12 of them. Um, I managed to get one of these. This is from a machine shop out in Wyoming. I have this rack and it, it, it actually started off as 10 high and I sold the top of it. Uh, these bins are really, really big. These are the 20s and man, they hold a lot of ASFs. These are all my grow outs. I don't do any breeding in here. So I wean from where I just showed you and then they go in here for grow outs. And these do pretty well. I'm not a huge fan of this, managing the number of ASFs that are in each one of these tubs is really amazing. For hoppers and smalls, I probably have 70 to 80 in each one of these tubs. And then as they grow into mediums, I pull them and I put them in those big grow out bins over there. So that's what this is. It works, it's a part of the operation. It's not my favorite. I am about to experiment with a vision rack that is a rat rack for grow outs. And I'm gonna see if I can substitute that and maybe either move this one on to another breeder or repurpose this for bigger colonies. But again, I don't care for those big colonies. They didn't do very well in those big bins. Maybe they'll do okay in here. We'll see how this part of the operation goes. I have these fans mounted on the walls. They circulate air. I have one there. And then I have one over here on the entrance. You can see the attic access up top up there, the crawl space, there's no attic up there. Right here is the exhaust. That is a 480 CFM cubic feet per minute exhaust. So that moves a whole lot of air. This facility is 10 foot high ceilings, eight feet wide and 12 feet deep. So about 960 cubic feet. And did I do my math right on that? Eight wide, 12 deep would be 96 square feet, 10 high. Yeah, 960 cubic feet. So every two minutes, it's, it's turning over the air 100% in here. And that runs for about six hours a day, six times a day, one hour each. And that keeps it fresh in here, keeps the ammonia from building up and keeps the air mostly dry so that those ASFs don't get that greasy coat and all of that, the fur. 
You see here, I have my water lines run in. That is a hot water line if I ever wanna use it, but I just capped it off, but it is there if I want it. That is a pressure reducer and you reduce the pressure and then you send the water lines out and that's what everything is plumbed to. So it is all pressurized, but it's low pressure on the nozzles. And I'm really pleased with that. No more filling with uh, pitchers and buckets and all of that kind of stuff. I do have all of these that are still on bottles just because I haven't plumbed the rest of the rack yet. And I hate those bottles. It's a constant job. Look, that one's empty. That one's empty. You know, every day you just got to check all these bottles and fill them up. I have my backups in there. That's fine, but it's still a pain. There's a few other little details I really enjoy. Uh, these are Govee, uh, G-O-V-E smart switches. And you'll see there's one here, there's one there. Um, the light back there is on one. Those are smart switches that I can control from my phone. So the fans are on the smart switches. I could turn them on and off from home if I want. The exhaust system is programmed and they're all programmable. So you can program days and times that you want them running. You can, if I see from home that humidity is getting too high, I can just click it on and it'll, um, the exhaust will come on and it'll bring in fresh air, fresh drier air, especially in the winter time. So I really love those smart switches. I made a big effort to put outlets up high in here so that the racks can go up. Uh, this one here, obviously a rack will have to be on either side of it. High shelving from kitchens, I love that. Stainless steel, it will be sprayed down, cleaned, sanitized, um, and you can clean the dust off of it pretty well. Like I said earlier, have extra tubs, lots of them. It's great to just be able to clean and flip, and then you go to your dish pit and clean. Everything is off the floor in here, and almost all of them are on wheels. That back one is not. But you can see the dust accumulation and in stage today very well. You can see how clean it is in the middle and then the dust accumulates underneath. But once a week, I can pull everything out and just spray back there and spray behind it. One of the things that I love the most, I don't know if you could tell, this floor is sloped ever so slightly to the right. And there's a floor drain on the other side of that wall. Let's see how well this picks up back here. You see that there? If there's ever a flood or I want to spray the floor down and clean it, that drains right straight to the floor drain. I'll never have sheetrock or wall damage if there is a flood. It's going to go straight into the floor drain and it's an industrial floor drain. Those of you all don't know, this used to be a car wash bay. So part of the reason I did that was because of the N4 radiant heat and the floor drains in it. If you have questions that I didn't share, or you're not sure what I'm talking about on some of them, Feel free to ask. I'm always happy to uh, address any questions that you have or how I work and all of that. If you're looking for live ASFs in Minnesota, give me a call. I always sell live and local. If you're looking for frozen rodents, check out my friends at Cold Blooded Cafe. They are who I recommend for all of my frozen rodent needs as well. Thanks for hanging out. You made it to the end of the video. See you next time.